All right, what's going on, Vampires of Vargaron, and welcome to the 10 biggest changes coming to V Rising's 1.0 launch. First and foremost, you're going to notice absolutely crisper graphics and overall better UI changes and improvements. Next up, we've got quality of life improvements all the way across the board, such as a streamlined tutorial that offers tips and tricks as you play. Map routes, which your clanmates can see as well, and offer a sort of GPS guidance system to any point on the map that you choose. It can also be changed at will. And then followed very easily. So for newer players, this makes finding bosses, points of interest, world events, and PvP much easier to find. You also have territory quality of life improvements such as showing your territories on the map and how long they have until they're decayed. Part of the quality of life changes is the availability to change your armor's die at will anywhere in the game world, not just your castle. One of the next biggest changes is telegraphed player attacks. This also makes it a lot easier to see what's happening and when, especially for newer players. For example, my Chaos Volley now showcases exactly where that will go. My Greatswords, you can see where I will be attacking. Within your base is the Altar of Recollection, which allows you to reset an entire spell school. So I go to Reset School for my Lightning, and then we go to the Storm Magic, and now I can use the boss points that I gathered to choose new ultimates or new tier 1 through 3 abilities. So I can unlock Cyclone, I can unlock Polarity Shift, and this is free and you can do it as often as you want. So I can reset again. So it's as simpler as that for respecking before you've killed all the bosses, as currently when you kill bosses they give you a point in a school, like if you kill Keely you get a tier 1 frost spell point, and so then I go to frost and I can choose any of the tier 1 abilities that I want with that point, else I can just reset it and what I'm doing, if I'm doing PvE or PvP or I need a different set of skills, and then I just unlock the things that I want. Next up we have world events, such as the caravan system or the tier 1 through 2 rifts. These are often hot points for PvP. The reason why these are hot points for PvP is because they drop early game tier 1.5 and 2.5 weaponry, as well as recipes, materials, and things that are hard to come by. For example, in tier 2 Dunley, you can actually get entire stacks of cotton from them, so then you wouldn't have to get the garlic debuffs or any of the other things that cause slowdowns toward mid-game. They also drop gems for your spell schools, which can give you an early game advantage if you find the first one inside of Farbane Woods and you get a nice tier 1 or 2 gem, such as one that gives you more skeletons when you use Corrupted Skull or Ward of the Damned. You can also drop cosmetics, and a lot of time prisoners come out of the back that can be high in blood types. I pulled a 98% worker blood from the back of a caravan so far, and more. The endgame tier 2 rifts are some of the hardest content in the game because the primal blood souls that spawn at the end of a tier 2 rift can be one of 
almost any boss and it boosts them to level 85. So some of the hardest bosses in the game are boosted toward endgame. This is a prime spot for PvP and for people to duel and kill each other and gank. A great place to be in rat form as these are limited and you need as many as you can get to boost the passive benefits of your clan. Within your base, there are now extremely easy to use and streamlined storage types. For example, your alchemy storage, you don't actually need to have any of the same material in there for it to stack. So when you go up to the, the container, it shows you via highlights what can be put into that. And then you just click, click quick transfer. And so it makes going to your base very easy with materials. You just go up to like material storage and you place everything in there. Same thing with tailoring. All of your mats will be highlighted and you just put them in there on the go. So it's very easy to make a room, come home, and then drop all your coins, drop your gems, weapons, jewels, armor, herbs, and more. All of it just becomes very, very easy. You just go from uh, from spot to spot, quick storing. It takes like two seconds to, to quick dump and then leave. You will also find very quickly that you recognize what they are based on their appearance. And that allows you to just quickly grab potions or what have you and go. Speaking of potions, the new potion system is fantastic. Each potion will last an hour. So now you don't have to craft a ton of potions. You just need a few for your clan. The new resistances screen will showcase everything that you have and also your boons, your attributes such as spell leech, physical damage crit chance and physical damage critical power and these change as you use buffs and depending on your forms for example if we use the sun resist potion for an hour now my sun resistance will go up and then i can also remove the buff in this screen probably one of the biggest changes with 1.0 is the release of 11 weapons so now you have a multitude of melee mid-range and long-range weaponry to choose from such as the whip which has a spin attack and a root for PvP. The bow, which is very interesting. You build stacks with this, and your stacks will increase what happens when you fire. For example, it has pierce at full charge. You also gain a Q, which does a multitude of attacks. And the focus will launch additional arrows on your Q. And then you have a guided arrow. This will hit somebody and inflict a snare, and then it will turn to try to hit them again. Each point of focus that you have will increase the amount of times the arrow turn back to strike your enemies. You have pistols which at their base form, all the weapons have base forms and then elemental increases such as this. So here in base form I can't move when I'm using my Q and the E will explode after 3 seconds. But when you get to an endgame set such as the Endbringers, all of your attacks will trigger ignite for your Q and E. And your Q will allow you to move. And then your E will put a charge on them. And once you hit them with any other ability, the E will explode. Hitting the same target triggers the explosion instantly. So actually trying to get endgame gear sets and the right roles, as well as attributes, is going to be a large part of PvP and killing the four Soul Shard bosses at endgame, especially on a brutal server. Besides the 11 new weapons, we also have a multitude of armor sets across every single part of the game, especially endgame. At endgame, there is several sets, but I'm going to go over all the armor sets and weapon sets in a different video. One of the largest changes is a brand new area to the game where Dracula exists along with his general. It also offers this new difficulty brutal, which is not for the faint of heart. I have a thousand hours in this game and I died hundreds of times over my first playthrough and I still haven't even finished. It gives you increased loot, durability loss, damage multipliers across standard units and V-Bloods. The V-Bloods will be hitting you for 75% harder and they have increased unit level. It makes it really, really tough to fight these, especially like the end bosses for tier one, two, three, and four. The new area is the Ruins of Mordium with all the new, uh, a lot of the new world events. But just coming up here, I haven't yet killed um, Adam the Firstborn or Dracula. But I just want to showcase the, 
The strong changes is the soul shards. Now the bosses drop soul shards, which operate as an amulet. They give you a new ultimate such as Void Quake Vortex or Fallen Angel. The most interesting part about this is that these have limited durability and they must be recharged at the rifts on the map and only tier 2 rifts. They also drop when you die and you're shown wherever you're at on the map. It shows you moving with the amulets. As you can see, the uh, I've got one in base right now. So I, I could take this out and then have Fallen Angel. That is 817 durability minus 877. So you can actually see it on my cursor. I've got like the purple soul shard. So when people build the soul shard tracker, it would show me on the map moving. And they only last for like a day and a half, two days. So you have to take them to the rifts and you're very vulnerable at that point because you can't transform into a bat. It won't let you. So you can only use your horse or like wolf form to travel around the map and everybody else can bat on top of you and then fight you and then just keep batting. As you can see, Adam still has his and Dracula still has his. But I mean, the, the fact alone that these give you new ultimates that replace your ultimate and you have to take them out to charge them Fundamentally, it changes the way endgame PvP operates and who can hold the soul shards, soul shards, excuse me, and for how long. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. I will see you live on twitch.tv slash sobadstrange. Please comment, like, and love if you enjoyed any part of this video, and I'll see you for the next one.